In this video, we're going to talk about advanced GitHub search. I mean, look behind me. Have you seen this before? I hadn't. Actually, I, I stumbled across it by mistake and I had to play around with it and I thought it was really pretty cool. Really pretty cool. That's, that's a word, right? And I thought I would share it with you. So let's get started. But before we do get started, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. Well, how did I get here? Well, actually, I'm not too sure. So what I recommend is going to github.com forward slash search and it'll take you to this page. Again, I hadn't seen this page before either. And you can search across GitHub, which is pretty cool. But what's more cool is the advanced search. So if I click on the advanced search, what I really liked, I'm going to skip the free text search box at the top. But what I really liked was you know you can filter by owners repositories created dates okay pretty cool but it gets it gets much cooler languages so you can filter by markdown if you want to contribute to some markdown repositories that are really popular now they're kind of like documentation or list of other repositories a list of other useful information roadmaps and so on you can filter by markdown or JavaScript Python etc your your favorite language but what I really liked was this bit down here you could filter by how many stars or forks a project has and those stars aren't a way to value a project so that's not something I'm trying to say or trying to change or always say just because someone's got more followers on socials doesn't mean that they add more value and just like a repository if it has more stars doesn't mean it is a better repository definitely do your due diligence as i always say however being able to filter by a range of forks is quite interesting because you might want one that has say over 100 stars or 100 forks but less than a thousand and why would you want that because i feel in that range the projects are quite focused still active but not too active that they're too fast and the maintainers can give you a, a personal touch getting up to speed on their project and they really kind of want to improve their project at that kind of early stage is quite interesting. And the way you can do that is it gives you examples in the um, placeholders in the form fields. You could do zero with two dots to 100, that will give you zero uh, stars to 100, or you can do a specific number or greater than or less than. So well, as I was saying, I quite like the idea of doing 100 to 1000. So if I hit enter, it goes straight away. And now we've got repositories of stars with a max of 1000 and as little as 100. Little, that's still quite a lot. So it's still really good going. I actually would recommend putting that on maybe the fork side and, and, and see what you get. Other thing I really liked when it was last pushed to. So you might want repositories that haven't had activity in the last week because you might want to get onto that and kind of revitalize that, you know bring some energy to that project, which I think is really good. Another thing you might like is one that has has activity, has had, yeah, that's a word. I'm recovering from COVID, so excuse the voice, bear with me, but I was really keen to get this video out, so I thought I'd get it out even, I'm only at kind of like 25% capacity. Repositories that has, has had activity more than a month, like within the last month, that's what I mean, within the last month, I think that's really important. You, you might not want to contribute to a project that hasn't had activity in the last four weeks. So you can do things like that. So if you wanted to do must have activity in the last four weeks, then you could do greater than, and you saw the, the style, it's year, month, day. So what's the date today? 15th of May. So that would be the fifth month. And we said four weeks, right? So we would do 15th probably of the fourth and we'd hit enter. And we can actually see repositories seven hours ago, seven hours ago, and so on. I've just noticed licensing MIT uh, and some other ones as well. And you can actually filter by license as well. There are lots of good licenses. So yeah, you might not want to narrow down. MIT is obviously a very, very popular one. And by default, it doesn't include forks, which I think is pretty good because you don't want to contribute really to someone else's fork. I mean, you might do in the future when you get to know the project or get to know the person in the project but to begin with probably not a good place to start um, and there are other options as well which is i think really interesting i haven't explored them all but i really thought that kind of section in the repository options was super interesting let me know in the comments below what you think of this advanced search let me know if you knew about it and let me know what projects you're contributing to i think that's enough it's time for me to go get some rest everyone Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up and join our Discord in EddieHub. We contribute and collaborate on open source every day. And I want you to come and chat with us and take part. A link to our Discord in the description below. I'll see you there.